after the Second World War, a lot of these murderers who collaborated with the Nazis would end up working with the CIA in order to create uh, Cold War propaganda. And a lot of this uh, was about whitewashing the dark reality of these uh, people's criminal activities and uh, especially their murderous activities. The fact that they were uh, participants in organizing mass murder. Uh, this is why Stepan Bandera, after the Second World War, went over to Austria and then to Germany because it was in these countries where uh, NATO uh, intelligence agencies were collaborating with Nazis and Nazi collaborators like Bandera. Uh, Stepan Bandera also was actively working to uh, whitewash and to really erase the criminal history, the criminal record of his organization, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, known better as uh, its acronym, the OUN. So a lot of this type of thing was happening after the Second World War. It was like, you know, you had the war, during the war, all these horrific atrocities were, were being done because, you know, during a war, all of the psychopaths and the criminals, they have their opportunity to do whatever it is that they want. Uh, hence why the Japanese uh, soldiers raped so many women, and hence why you had all of these Japanese scientists who were committing horrific uh, experiments on civilians and POWs because in the middle of a war uh, you can uh, do what you want and then after the war you can uh, find a way to wiggle your way out of it by simply collaborating with the victors. Um, during a war pretty much every single psychopath shows their true face. If they were acting like law-abiding citizens before the war, uh, during the war, they expose themselves. They expose uh, all of the demons that possess them uh, through their actions. And uh, another example of uh, whitewashing history or simply ignoring it uh, is uh, Unit 731. After the Second World War, uh, these uh, Japanese scientists who were a part of a military unit known as Unit 731 uh, simply made an offer to General MacArthur that he could not refuse. And that was, we will give you all of the information uh, about our experiments as long as you do not prosecute us and you shield us from any sort of prosecution. And uh, the Americans said, yes, give us all that information, regardless of the fact that it involved you guys uh, freezing people alive, uh, infecting people with bubonic plague, infecting people with malaria. Yeah, it doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Who cares? For the glory of science, for the religion, for the God of science, uh, we will shield you from uh, the evils of the Inquisition, and that is prosecution. The Soviet Union came out and said, hey, we can prosecute these monsters. And the Americans said, no, to hell with you. We will not do such a thing. During the, um, the uh, activities of the Ukrainian nationalists against the Soviets, uh, the Germans formed the Waffen-SS Galassian Division. This would be active in uh, well, what was then within uh, Poland, but today is within Western Ukraine. And uh, these um, Ukrainian fighters who were a part of this uh, SS unit, they would be involved in butchering uh, Polish and Jewish civilians as German proxies. The Waffen-SS Galassian Division, when it was formed, it was formed as pretty much an all-Catholic unit. Because in Ukraine, there is a very strong Catholic presence. It's not all, you know, Eastern Orthodox. There's a very strong Catholic presence. Ukrainian Catholics 
<clears throat> are members of a branch of the Catholic Church known as the Uniates. Um, their proper title is the uh, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. So basically, they are Catholic, but they have all of the trappings of Greek Orthodoxy while being under Rome. Essentially, they are one of the Eastern rites of the Roman Catholic Church. The Waffen SS Galassian Division were barbaric, violent, evil, vicious, murderous. Uh, Tadeusz Petrovsky talks a lot about them in his book, Poland's Holocaust, and he documents and shows how uh, they were involved in the genocide of the Polish population in Galassia. Uh, hence why they were called Waffen SS Galassia. That's where they were. Now, the Ukrainian uh, Greek Catholic Church was involved in blessing the formation of this uh, SS unit. Uh, the bishop of the Uniates, or the bishop of the uh, Ukrainian uh, Greek Catholic Church, uh, Joseph Slippy, or Josip Slippy, he gave his blessing to the formation of the Waffen uh, SS. And he was tied with the Metropolitan of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, Andrei Sheptitsky. And uh, Andrei Sheptitsky gave his full enthusiastic support to the Ukrainian nationalists, the OUN, which would uh, participate in the slaughter of Poles in uh those regions, Galassia, Lvov, etc. But uh, after the Second World War, all of a sudden, uh, Andrei Sheptitsky and Joseph Sippy became heroes. They uh, were amazing people, and uh, Slippy was a victim of Soviet tyranny. After the war, the Soviets put him in prison. They prosecuted him for... Nazi collaboration, and rightfully so, that's what he was involved in. He gave his blessing to the Waffen-SS. He supported the Waffen-SS. Andrei Sheptitsky also supported the Nazis and the uh, hard-right, murderous Ukrainian nationalists. And what I have read is pretty fascinating. Uh, what I have read is that Pope John XXIII and the U.S. government intervened on behalf of Joseph Slippy and uh, implored that he be released. Well, eventually he was released, and uh, Joseph Slippy would go on to enter Europe and participate in the Second Vatican Council. And today he is hailed still as a victim of Soviet oppression, and it really goes to show you that uh, people can be easily deceived just by putting on the face or putting on the label of uh, oppressed by the Soviets or you know political dissident who was persecuted by the Soviets when the reality was that this person was a Nazi collaborator, this person was a mass murderer, as in the case with uh, Mr. Simšić, who was given a hero's award by uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the Jewish president of Ukraine. He was given the hero's award. He is uh, he is hailed as someone who uh, defied the Soviets, and he was persecuted by the Soviets, when the reality was that the Soviets prosecuted him because he was a mass murderer who killed the whole family, who ordered the extermination of an entire Polish village. But you'll have the, you know, that the, the, you'll have this whole Jordan Peterson mentality of, oh, well, you know, he was, he was fighting for the, the power of the individual against the tyranny of the collective. When the reality was that, you no, know, this person was a mass murderer and he deserved prosecution. And, uh, you know, that was the case for a lot of these Nazis. A lot of these people who worked with the Nazis. After the war, they would end up working with the CIA as really Cold War operatives. 
um, a huge part of the Cold War was collaborating with Nazis. And by Nazis, I don't mean just neo-Nazis. I mean actual Nazis, people who were uh, members of the SS or they collaborated with the SS and they ended up working with the CIA or some other European intelligence agency, Western intelligence agency. Uh, and they, were, they would be involved in creating Cold War propaganda. Uh, a lot of these Ukrainian nationalists would go to Chicago, New York, Canada, Germany, and they would work as Cold War operatives. And they would also work to whitewash the criminal history of the OUN, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, because they wanted to, to present this image of the OUN as just a righteous organization of warrior men who were defying the tyranny of the Soviets. And a lot of this plays into the emotions of Americans who today would follow Jordan Peterson. Uh, the worst of the worst, the worst of the worst, Mikola Lebed ended up working with the CIA. Mikola Lebed was the mastermind behind the Volinia massacre. He was the orchestrator of the Volinia massacre. He was the one. He was the mastermind. Not Bandera, not Melnik. Yes, these guys were involved, no doubt. But I'm talking about the leading mastermind behind the uh, massacre of the Poles in Volinia was uh, uh, Nikola Lebed. And Nikola Lebed would end up gaining entry into the United States thanks to the CIA and working for, working for some nonprofit organization as a Cold War operative, creating anti-Soviet propaganda and you can go see his grave in New York, in uh, not New York in uh, in uh, Pennsylvania today his grave is in Pennsylvania today you believe believe it or not i believe it because america is a country that's full of psychos so why not bring in more psychos and you know have him live here give him good paying jobs have him work as propaganda operatives and then give him a good uh, burial you know, people can uh, criticize me and say, you know, Ted, you are an American. What place do you have to talk about the histories and the political affairs of other countries? Well, as an American citizen, I am a citizen of the empire of America. I am a citizen of the world empire, which means that my country works with all of the psychopaths of your countries. So I have every right to criticize such policies because my country is involved in the conflicts of your countries. And my country tends to arm the worst of the worst or will work with the worst of the worst soullessly for some sort of geopolitical ends like working with Ukrainian Nazis or Japanese scientists who experimented on people. And therefore, um, as an American citizen, I have every right to talk about these things. The Cold War never really ended. It has continued on under different manifestations, one of which was the counter-jihad movement. Islam pretty much became the new communism after 9-11. And uh, a number of people who were involved in Cold War propaganda would eventually transition into anti-Islam propaganda. Uh, one of these guys was David Horowitz, who would collaborate with people like Laszlo Pastor. The Nixon administration worked directly with uh, Laszlo Pastor, who was a member of the Hungarian Nazi Party, the Arrow Cross, which was responsible for the extermination of ten to 15,000 Jews, Serbs, Gypsies, and others, and for deporting 80,000 people to death camps in Austria. 
uh, in fact, Pastor, and this gets really disturbing, Pastor was commissioned by the U.S. government to recruit neo-Nazis in Eastern Europe. And this was uh, all part of Operation Gladio, in which NATO uh, intelligence agencies worked directly with far-right and Nazi uh, 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 paramilitaries and and uh, organizations as a way to counter uh, the Soviet Union. Laszlo Pastor was uh, a Hungarian Nazi collaborator who would eventually, after the Second World War, work with uh, Paul Weyrich, who was uh, the co-founder of the Heritage Foundation. Laszlo Pastor would end up working with people like David Horowitz. And it was the Horowitz Foundation that would end up funding much of the counter-jihad movement. Pamela Geller, one of the big faces of the counter-jihad movement back in the day, worked with uh, Bulgarian fascists, hard-right Bulgarian activists. In fact, uh, she uh, helped found uh, an organization called um, SCION, which was uh, Stop, it was a, sorry, SION, Stop the Islamization of Nations. And the leader of her uh, Bulgarian branch was a man by the name of Pavel Chernev, who was a hard rightist in Bulgaria who would also work with other hard rightists in Bulgaria. So you see the same sort of activities with the counter-jihad as you did with uh, counter-communism. And it really is just utilizing the same sort of strategy of the Cold War. Now nobody really talks about Islam. No one really cares about Islam anymore. In fact, I see Islam gaining a new wave of popularity, especially with uh, the rise of fighters like uh, like uh, Khabib. So anti-Islam sentiment really has declined immensely since 9-11 and the explosion of the counter-jihad movement in the 2010s and in the early 2000s. Um, but anti-Russian uh, sentiment is quite high, especially now with the whole war in Ukraine. And uh, this sentiment of uh, being against Russia has uh, enabled a lot of people to lift up their fists in favor of Ukrainian fascism, Ukrainian hard-right ultranationalism. And no matter what you tell people, no matter what facts you present to people about the dangers of this movement, they do not care. They simply say the same thing over and over again. It's the Ukrainians who are being invaded, therefore we must support them no matter what they believe in. And you can show them the Ukrainians crying out to Ukraine, saying, Mother Ukraine, uh, come into our hearts, let us be reborn in you. It's a, it's a cult. And you can show people how it's a cult. You can show people how they revere Bandera, how they revere uh, Melnik and, and, and Shuktovich and all these mass murderers. They don't care. They do not give a damn because they themselves are in a state of strange emotional psychosis. Just like people in the early 2000s, people in the, in the 2010s were working with, with racists and, and far rightists in the name of fighting Islam. My father was a pioneer in in the in the um, in the movement of of exposing Islam, but my father never worked with these types of people, never. But in the in the twenty tens, I remember there was this whole movement that made it so that uh, one should should support the LGBT because Islamists are against the LGBT. One should. Uh, support these crazy nationalists in Europe because they're fighting against the Islamists. Let's support uh, the AFD. Let's support the Sweden Democrats. Robert Spencer, one of the main faces of the counter-jihad movement, went to Sweden 
and he uh, spoke for the Sweden Democrats, which w literally is a, is a political party that has a substantial following today. A political party in Sweden that was literally founded by members of the SS. And, and, and it's, you know, in the Cold War, the CIA worked with Nazis. And in the, in the counter-jihad movement, we see people working with Nazis. It's the same thing. The same type of evil. And today, if you, you can tell people, look, the, these Ukrainians, they, 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 they are fascists. They, they have swastikas and kolovrats, and, and they, they worship their nation, and they're part of some weird cult, and they do what, atrocities and massacres. And you can tell them all these facts until you're blue in the face. They will find a way to smokescreen the truth. And they'll say, oh, no, 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 it's exaggerated. If it's exaggerated, then how come the Jewish president of Ukraine gives a hero's award to a Nazi mass murderer, Chimchich, who, who slaughtered a whole family? How come? In, in Ukraine, the Jew awards the Nazi. If the Jew is awarding the Nazi in your country, you have a Nazi problem. It's... It's horrendous, guys. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.